Thank you for joining me in today's video, in which, as with others a part of the series, I'll be reading a paragraph to you, such as the one located just behind me. Embedded within the paragraph are the potential for errors related to grammar, punctuation, syntax, and other vectors, so bear that in mind as you listen to me read. Afterwards, I will, hoping that this stays legible for you, I will step out of frame and ask that you pause the video to make corrections independently. And then I'll ask that you resume so that you and I can make corrections together. Feel free to use the comment section below if you disagree with a correction I've made, or perhaps you have a better version or an alternative to what I've offered. Uh, if, and I hope you do find this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe so that uh, we can continue to practice together. But for now, let me go ahead and just adjust this camera. I'm gonna go ahead and jump in by reading the paragraph. <clears throat> Hopefully I'm not obstructing it too much, but all right. So Ellis Island was named for its original owner, a man by the name of Samuel Ellis. He operated a tavern for local fishermen, fishermen on, the, on the island. Before that, the sandy piece of land was known to New Yorkers as Gibbet Island. A gibbet was a gallows-like structure from which criminals, such as pirates, were hanged. Occasionally, in the 1700s, pirates were hanged from trees on the island shore. Earlier, the island was known by other names. The Dutch colonists who settled in New York around 1630 called the island Oyster Island because of the nearby oyster beds, which had been a source of food for people in the area for many decades. All right, uh, now once more, go ahead and pause the video to make those corrections and again, resume when you're ready to go. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my computer. So starting at the beginning, Ellis Island was named for its, and that's correct, by the way, hopefully you didn't make this mistake to add an apostrophe, thinking that the object pronoun it needs an apostrophe to showcase ownership. In fact, that's not the case. Once you add an apostrophe to the object pronoun, it becomes it is, the contraction of. We want to keep its possessive form, which is just with the S, no apostrophe. So just throwing that out there. So going back, Ellis Island was named for its original owner, a man by the name of Samuel Ellis. Well, here we're going to go ahead and add a pause. So a comma. A man by the name of Samuel Ellis, both of which are proper nouns, a first name and a surname. Period. Start the new sentence. Capitalize it. He operated a tavern, which is uh, one with one B, excuse me, for local fisherman, which is singular. We really want fishermen. We're talking about many. So we're going to change that A to an E on the island. Before that, the sandy piece, piece is more of like a, uh, you know, like a lack of, how should I say, discomfort, or we could say like an agreement between people or nations. So instead, we're actually looking for a portion of something or an element of something. So we're going to change that to P-I-E-C-E. -E. A piece of land was known to New Yorkers, which is also a proper noun, the inhabitants of New York, the New Yorkers as Gibbet Island. Proper noun, it's the name of a location, period. Go ahead and capitalize the next sentence, that first article, A. A gibbet, which we're gonna treat as a general noun here so we can keep it lowercase, <coughs> excuse me, was a gallows-like structure from which criminals, such as pirates, comma, uh, were hanged. Occasionally in the 1700s, pirates were hanged from trees on the island's shore. We're talking about one island. Here we have a plurality. So we're gonna showcase ownership with that possessive form a singular possessive form by adding the apostrophe before the S. And we're gonna go ahead and correct the word shore, which is spelled so far correct, except for that ending letter, which is missing. We're gonna end it with an E. Earlier, the island was known by other names. The Dutch colonists, Dutch being a proper noun, and colonists being misspelled, C-O-L-O-N-I-S-T-S, were settled in New York, name of a location, make sure to capitalize it, it's a proper noun, around 1630, I'm sorry, the Dutch colonists who settled in New York around 1630 called the island Oyster Island. Oyster Island is the, oh my gosh, is the name of the place, so we're gonna capitalize it, oops, capitalize the wrong one, because of the nearby oyster beds. Oyster is misspelled, O-Y-S-T-E-R. Uh, which had been a source for food for people in the area for many decades. So that seems like a run-on. So the colonists who settled in New York around 1630 called the island Oyster Island, comma, because of the nearby oyster beds, which had been a source. So do you know what? I think that's okay the way it is. However, again, please feel free to use the comment section to let me know alternatives to what I've just given you. All right, uh, hopefully these corrections lined up with yours. 
Again, feel free to let me know what you did in the comment section. Uh, I look forward to working with you again. All right, thank you.